to the cross. He prayed that awesome prayer in John 17 that he recorded. And then he did, he did they had a Last Supper. Do you remember the Last Supper where Jesus broke bread and gave it to his disciples? And they had that meal. And before they did that, he took out a bowl of water, right? And he wrapped a towel around him. And Jesus went and washed the feet of each one of the disciples. And Peter's like, hey, you can't wash my feet. I'll wash your feet. And he says, if you don't let me wash your feet, you're not, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. And, and Peter says, then wash my whole body. You know, he's like, just give it all to me. But the, what Jesus was trying to tell us through that example was that we have to serve one another and love one another. And that has nothing to do with what I'm going to be speaking about today, but I just thought it was appropriate because I had the old castle stuff. But um, I think what happens when we get our focus off ourselves and realize we're here to be a light to the world around us, then we can see God move in power. I want God to move in my life. I want power in my life. I want to see people say that, and if I just sit here and pray on every day, it's not going to happen. I think it happens when we actually take pray, and then we take that prayer with us and go into the marketplace and share our faith. Leo wasn't searching to minister to somebody, but through his research, God gave him an opportunity through the picture of that cross Think about the cross for a minute. I'm just, this is not my, I'm not going to teach on this, but I want you to, I want everything about it. How much does McDonald's pay, pay for advertising for the Golden Arches? Every year, I need all, in China too, China, oh, no, McDonald's, right? Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, everywhere, right? Wendy's now, all these different fast food, they, they spend millions and millions of dollars on advertising on the TV. So you can see the image over and over and over and over and over again, and and that I don't know what that I don't know what those numbers are millions of dollars, but think what the price it took for for that symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think what the price was when Jesus hung on the cross, the Son of God, the the very flesh, if you will, the blood of God, hanging on that cross for you and me. So that symbol could be used all over the world now, and anytime you see it, you know what it means. And I know the, uh, the culture, uh, the pop culture, they'll, they'll wear a cross, they don't know what that means. They'll wear it upside down, sideways, they'll, do, they'll mock it, but they don't understand. I know what that means. They, I know that, that's the, that, that that cross represents my Savior dying for their sin and my sin. And I rejoice at that. And I, every time I see that on a TV or some, some young kid using it and cursing at God and still has a cross on, I'm thinking, you don't know how close you are to the truth. That's what I think. I think you don't know how close you are to understand that the cross that you have on is the very thing that will save you from what you're, what you're doing. Amen? So just seeing that picture, see, Leo now, because he was a Christian a couple years ago, he saw that picture doing research, doing his job, doing what he's supposed to do, all of a sudden he's seen that, and now is an open door. The Holy Spirit deposited in him and said, go ahead, go through that door. How come? Why were you in that place? And all of a sudden he says to him, even though he's hiding from the mob, that's what we call the mob here, <laughs> hiding from the, the, the people that would kill and take his life, but he's a, he has a, he's a believer, and because you shared with him, Leo, think about this, because you, he encouraged him now in the faith even though his life is right now all upside down and he doesn't have no hope, but he has another believer that know, recognize that he'll agree with him in prayer. And, and you know, God can turn that around just like he's done many other lives, even in this room. Amen? God can do it. I believe it. Amen? I believe it. God is real. Amen? All right, so if you will, we're going to be talking on a series today. We started a prayer four, five, six years, every February or so around towards this time of year, we usually teach on the tabernacle prayer. How many has been through the tabernacle prayer? Heard it, heard it, know it, memorize it. If you don't know it, I'll get you some information about it. And we'll probably be teaching on it a little bit for two weeks. Tina and I will be doing that together. Again, the reason why we do that is because it's a, 
a process of prayer. It's not the prayer of the pray. Just like when Jesus said in Matthew, pray this way to his disciples, right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When Jesus was giving that as an example to his disciples, he didn't say pray this prayer. He said pray this way. Now there's nothing wrong, listen to me, there's nothing wrong praying that prayer, okay? Because you're praying, praying the very words that Jesus said to pray. And sometimes a good way for us to get back in our prayer life. If we don't know how to pray, we've been away from God in prayer. How many of you guys, uh, you know, when uh, you've been walking with God, you've been kind of doing your own thing, but you haven't really been praying, it kind of takes a, it takes a while to get back into praying. I mean, you feel guilty about getting back into prayer. You feel like, hey, I missed God for a while. Is it just me or is it everybody? You know what I'm saying? We just kind of get to that point where we're just kind of, uh, man, I know I should go in my prayer closet. I know I should go over here and pray. Uh, but, you know, I've been so, you know, I haven't done it in a long time. I think God's mad at me. Yeah, I want to tell you something this morning. This is the truth. God is never mad at you if you said Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Matter of fact, his love is so great that, that when, once Jesus came and died on the cross, we don't see him destroying cities like Sodom and Gomorrah anymore, do we? Huh? We don't see those type of things happening like that because there's, gra there's a grace that's happening right now. Now, I believe uh, he tests us. Uh, word of God shows us that he punishes us. I mean, there's that. But is he mad at you? Is it his, in his character to be that way? Or is his character love, peace, and joy? Look at uh, Galatians 2, 5.22. Maybe that's his character. Maybe God is not as mad at us as we think he is. What I think happens, and this is just a side note, what I think really happens is the enemy puts into your thinking that you're not good enough. The enemy puts into your thinking that you made a mistake, and so now you can't come to the holy of holies. But that's a lie from the enemy because what happened when Jesus died on the cross, it says in the temple, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom, a huge, wide curtain, built strong curtain, ripped, God ripped it open. Why? Because now, because through the blood of Jesus, because we're cleansed by him, we can walk into the very presence of God and talk to God. And make our requests and our petitions and all those fancy words. Just talk to him. God, I got a need. God, I'm hurting. I've been struggling all my life. And I, I don't have no hope. God just wants, he wants to hear that from you. So this year, 2014, for our, for our guests and our visitors, 2014, we made a decision that we would read the Bible every day. And I've been pretty faithful at that. I said, if I can, I, I mean, if I want you guys to read the Bible every day, I, I, I need to read the Bible every day myself, right? right. So I get in the office and I turn on my computer because I have one of those fancy Air uh, MacBook Airs. I plug in my little uh, uh, my speakers, right? And I go to the Gateway Bible and I put the audio Bible on and I read with it. Why? Because I just love that time where I'm just yes. spending and I don't have to pronounce all those fancy words in Genesis and Exodus. <laughs> Helps me a little bit, you know. It's good. It's good to be in the Word of God every day. Amen. Spend a little time in the Word of God. Don't let the enemy say that you, you're so busy with your job. You're so busy that you can't spend time in the Word of God, the very love letter from God to us, the very nature of God, the very oh, the love of God that comes through His Word, even when you... Some stuff you read you don't even understand. The Hittites and Gammonites and all of the ites and stuff. You know, like I don't the, the names. I don't. I, I, they got to be important. Else God want to put them there, preserve them. So you kind of learn how those tribes developed and where they came and the lineage of. And God's showing from Genesis three all the way through and through these different stories the lineage that the, the we call the the thread of the redemption. All the way through the Bible, all through those Old Testament stories, all through all the way when Mary had baby Jesus, amen? All that is to, to show and reveal the love of God, to redeem us from our sin, amen? To, to give us hope and life. Amen. Hallelujah. I love it. The other thing that we said that we do in 2014, and this is for our visitors and for all of you to, as a reminder, is that we said we would pray out loud for our loved ones. Not pray quietly. I pray for you, Larry. That's really good to get that. <laughs> but 
when Leo spoke that prayer, we heard that. And faith, my faith, listen, I like, love, I love new Christians when they pray, so I just love it. I just think it's, it's like your baby taking the first step. I just, oh, you know, you're excited, right? I get excited when I hear you pray out loud. When uh, Angel, Dion, and Richard, and, and Rajiv, they get up and they pray out here. I just, I'm just so proud of them, like a papa, you know? Yes, they're getting it, you know? And I hear them say things of faith. And, uh, and I remember a couple weeks ago when uh, just Angel, I don't want to pick on here, just to, you know, get you highlight or anything, but I just, just really believe it was just a, a very compassionate, loving prayer that went across the sanctuary. It was beautiful. It was, I can't even put it into words. I was just in awe of listening to my, my son and the, and, and the Spirit just pray for you guys. I was just, ah, oh, man, I, I was so happy all day. I just was so, I was like a little kid, happy, you know, like a proud daddy. But, uh, so, our second thing is that we want you to pray out loud, out loud for your loved ones, for your wives, for your children, amen? And then pray for the leadership of the church, like Richard had mentioned. Pray out loud for us. Um, and then pray out loud for lost people. Pray out loud for somebody that you know that doesn't know Jesus yet. For, look, God, I call out Joe. I call out this person. I call out that person. Amen? Uh, my, I have a lot of family members. I'm not saved, so I get a long list. And that's fine. All right? Um, so I just call them out. I verbally call them out. What does it do for me? I mean, I know God already knows them, and I know He already knows they're lost, right? I mean, come on, God knows everything, right? He already knows. But when I say God, I want God's will. I say God has a will. We have a will. He, he put that in us. And I'm asking God to take His love and pour it out through His Spirit onto my sisters and my brothers, my physical sisters and brothers, uh, that are not saved. I want them to come to Jesus. I want them to love the Lord like I love, or maybe better than I love the Lord. Amen? I just want them to love Jesus and find the saving grace. So when they go through turmoil in their life, instead of calling me up and saying, would you pray for me because they give me this litany of just this junk that's going on in their life, they could come, I like to get a phone call where they say, I was praying and the Lord revealed to me this. That would be a great phone call, right, that you get from your family members. And I just said, my, some of my family members aren't saved. And so I pray for them. But then I pray for people I meet. And I call out their names. I want you to call out their names this year. And like Leo prayed and I agree, I'm, I want you to lead one person to Jesus. I want you to disciple that person and spend time in the Word with them and share with them how God saved you and changed your life. Amen. I want that to happen this year. And, and I just want to encourage you to do that. So we, that's the second thing. And the, the third thing is, uh, what did we say, Richard? Uh, I can't even remember. Uh, oh, it helps somebody. Help somebody. Help a lost person. Don't And don't expect anything in return. Amen? Just go, you know, uh, I was meeting with Pastor Jorge in my office this past week. And uh, we're going over this, this new uh, computer program. And both of us are not computer people, so it's kind of fun trying to figure stuff out, you know. And uh, I got a phone call. And somebody needed help. And I said, okay, well, if you meet, they need gas for their car, right? We're out of gas. We need to get to work, blah, blah, blah. And I get these phone calls sometimes. Sometimes it's like, hey, we ain't got no money. Sorry, you know? But I remember what we said. We have to help somebody. We said, we're dedicated to, right? We're going to help people, right? So when people call the church, I want to help. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's my, I have to take money out of my own pocket. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. But he said he needed money for gas. I said, okay, well, we got a few dollars in the checking account. Just well, meet me at the Shell station. When you get there, call me. And I'll come down and I'll fill up your gas tank. Oh, I don't need that much money, sir. I just need a few bucks. I said, just, okay, fine, whatever. And I figured a gas tank's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, you know, whatever. God's bigger than $100, right? Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on, folks. God's bigger than 100 bucks. And so I thought, you know, why not? So Pastor Jorge's like, I got to go. He calls me. And just right when we're getting into the good stuff and learning the program. And so I got to go. So I drive down to the gas station. And he's all happy and thankful and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. People, how people are sometimes. And I just don't want him to feel guilty, you know. No, no, it's fine. Don't, don't do that, you know. Here's my bulletin from our church. You want to come visit us? Come. You know, it's not a requirement here for me to help you. Amen? Amen. Jesus didn't say, Amen. Jesus didn't Amen. say you had to be a believer for me to help you, but he healed them anyway, right? Just help. Yeah. How, there's a different attitude in our in our heart when you're helping people. You just help them. And what happens, is, you know, they're grateful. And I just hope that they won't say, oh, Pastor Bob, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just hope they say, thank you, Jesus. That's what I'm I, I, That's what I want. And, uh, and uh, I don't want people to draw attention to them. 
this church, but or to me, or to Richard, or to any of the leadership. I want people to come and meet Jesus here. And so uh, I put the, you know, did the credit card, put the, I did it for them. I didn't have it, I did it, you know. I'm serving, I'm loving, right? That's not unexpected. They always expect, anyway, I just want to do something better than other Christians would do. I want to be like real Leo, you know, like love people, right? So I filled up his gas tank, $14, click, $14, it was full. I'm like, thank you, not me, I said, thank you, Lord, I opened up the box. Wow, God, you are like cool, you know, I don't double the truck, he says, oh, well, he goes, I guess my gas gauge is bad, you know, it's like, I don't, well, I don't know, it's full, I hit again, I shook the car, $14.58, that was it, or something like that, you know, it was full. So I'm like, hey, thank you, God. <laughs> and uh, that was pretty cool. And uh, told him, he's, he's thankful, and he's trying to tell me all these things. I'm like, hey, God loves you, man. And just go, you know. And he left. And so if he never, if he never comes to this door, if he never opens up the door and comes to this church, I'm happy about that, amen? I think, that, I think I'm good with that, right? I just think that he needed to know that somebody cared. And in, in his act of desperation, he called our number. Now, I think to myself, this is my thinking, there's hundreds of churches in Madison, Wisconsin, right? And he called this church. At the time, I'm like busy. <laughs> so I could have said to him, no, we don't have no money. You know, we're a small church. Uh, I got this whole routine down. We're a small church. We don't have money. We got, we're behind on our electric bill too. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no. Because I'm going to tell you, and we're going to talk about prayer, so that's why I get, I, I'm doing this. Pastor Jorge and myself, um, he's going to help me. I'm going to help him with his painting business a little bit. He, wants, he needs some additional help in uh, managing... Uh, uh, doing bids, uh, bidding on jobs. So I'm going to help him do that. And bef so I'm driving down here and I'm praying and, we, and I had got been studying on, on this sermon and then uh, he got here and I'm thinking the whole time that before we start anything and talk about business, we're going to pray together because Pastor Boy he loves to pray, man. Amen. He loves to pray and I love to pray. And so I, and, uh, we started talking about the business stuff and he goes, hey, before we do this, let's pray. I'm like, oh, yeah, because that's what I want to do, you know. Because we both got excited. We get excited, Leo. You know, Christians get together. You get excited when you talk about God. You want to talk about the Word. You get excited, right? And so, yeah, so we pray. And we, this is our prayer. This is part of our prayer. I don't, I don't know exact words because I don't know Spanish real good. But, um, <laughs> but we pray. We pray together. And one of the prayers that we pray is that we would glorify God in what we do together. Amen. And that we would be able to touch lives through what we do. So the people I meet, like whoever I meet, you know, or whoever he meets new, that we'd be able to touch their lives for the kingdom of God. Paint their house, do whatever we have to do, but better than that, that we would fill them up with the glory of God. Amen? And that God's grace would be uh, in them. And so that's what happened. Uh, we prayed that prayer, and then the phone rang. Uh, Test. Uh, yeah. Right? Test. Hello. Uh, I ran out of gas. I need some help with gas. And immediately, I didn't say, oh, no. I didn't give him the excuse, you know, we don't have money. I said, where are you? He was there. I said, can you get to this place, location? He goes, yes. I said, okay, I'll meet you at the gas station. Call me when you get there. And that's what we did. Because it wasn't about, it, that was like a test right there. I think God tests you in your faith. And it's like, well, I could have just gapped that guy off. Is that a good word? Can I use that word? I'm too busy. I can't do it. We do that to the Holy Spirit sometimes, don't we? You know what I'm saying? When the Holy Spirit leads you to do something and you're really busy and you go, oh, I just, that, that, that's okay. I'm not going to do that. And I go do my own thing. Right? This year I pray that we would move when the Spirit of God moves us. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. And we would touch a life. And I'm telling you, it's a crazy thing that happens in you. When God uses me like that, I get so high and happy. I mean, I get benefit from it. I benefit. It's not like, oh, uh, I lost money. I don't even think it's, that money is not 
has, is insignificant to what God's doing in that person's heart. You know what he, when he left there, he didn't feel guilty. He didn't have to come to our church. He just, just knew a pastor loved him enough to go come and fill his death gas tank up. That's all he knows, right? And hopefully maybe some other Christian down the road will do the same thing. And then they'll draw him closer to Jesus. Amen? And that's what we do. We love people. The greatest commandments, Jesus said, is to love God and to love other people. Amen? Love other people, whatever that means. Maybe our prayer today, before we go any further, is we should just love God. Let us love people. Hallelujah. God is sovereign, is he not? Yes. That means he has supreme authority over everything. His will above everybody else's will. Right? Another thing, God, is God never changes. Think about it. He never changes. So when he says he loved us, that means he loved us. When he loves people, he loves people. Amen? The word will, God's will never changes. God's desire never changes. God created us in his image. And he placed, I said earlier, he placed his will into our will. So when I think about when uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham, that conversation you ever go and just examine that. And of course, while I'm reading through the Bible, and because I'm doing that Bible chart, you know, kind of thing, and trying to every day, every day, every day, don't stop. Get the word in you. Have it change your heart. Have it change your mind. Have it change your thinking. So that conversation comes up. Oh God, what if there was thirty? What if there was 35? I mean, I think Abraham could have went down to one. Right? God, I know, don't get angry with me, but if there was just, you know, I would probably go down. God, if there's just one, would you save the city? Because no lot was there in his family, so he knew that. And God would probably say, yes, but there wasn't any righteous there. Go ahead and get your brother. Go ahead and get your family out of there because the time is going down. And people use that in a negative way. Now God is always mean God, right? He always going to beat up everybody. But that's not what God's purpose was. We have a will that God placed in each one of us. And that will is the ability to say no or yes to God guiding us. So I have to tell people, God will never make you do anything. He won't make you be a Christian. What happens is revelation comes to our lives and we begin to realize that this God is real. And a lot of us, it has to do with a time of desperation. Amen? I was in jail and when I was down to the bottom, the lowest I think I could ever be, and then I looked up and there was Jesus reaching down to me saying, you are my son. Father God reaching to me and saying, you're my son. And at that moment, I remember a moment like it was right now. I remember that moment where I realized that I was the scum of the earth and God was giving me freedom. And God revealed to me that he loved me no matter what. And I, meant, I remember going through this whole thing with him. We're arguing back and forth like... I'm no good, I'm going to go home and divorce Tina so she can find a good man to take care of her. I'm going to go through the whole thing. I was going to go back to Waukesha, Wisconsin. I was going to work at Quad Graphics and just work in the bindery, and that's where my whole life was going to be. I had no hope. I had no future. I, had, I was nothing. Second, it was like God just took that eraser and erased my old life. Right? And there was nothing else but just this, this hope in front of me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't you love that? Yeah. That's the hope that you have in me. He want, God wants us to partner our will with His will in prayer. Yes. yes. Okay? He wants us to partner with Him in prayer. Because he knows, he said, Jesus said this, greater works will you do, and I always stumble over that passage when I think about 
What do you mean greater works? I mean, I'm not going to go to the cross and die on the cross for your sins. I mean, I couldn't even do that. My blood's just all human blood. It's not even got any value to the value that God puts on it. I can't wash away your sin. So I stopped like, what greater works can I do? Maybe I can take that message of that cross wheel and take it to people and show them that this is where your hope, this is where your peace, this is where your salvation is found. Do that message. But when I partner, God wants us to partner with Him in prayer. And when we do that, oh, can we say that that mountain be moved, removed and it be cast into the sea? Can we do that? Amen. And God says this, all you need to have is you partner with me, all you have to do is have a faith as a grain of a little mustard seed. Wow. I can use you if you just believe. I'll use you if you just have hope. I will test you because you're my son and daughter. Amen? I, I don't know about you, but I'm learning now, and, and I... Like I said last week, you know, this has been about 30 years or so we've been serving God, uh, Christian and serving God. There's always a test. And sometimes when there's trials and tribulations come your way, and, you know, how many get mad when things go wrong? You get mad? I, I get mad. I get like, I get, that's my default thing. It's, it's not a good thing. I get a little angry, you know, so, you know I'm just being old, open and honest with you. I get a little, I get the, that anger thing. Build up with me. I used to, this is why I have my favorite excuse was, I'm Italian, so I can do that. Right? <laughs> so I, you know, I'm Italian. Italians are a little loud and they get a little voice mad, a little temper, you know, short temper. That's just my personality. Then I realized I'm not Italian. I'm not, I'm not an American. I'm not white. I'm a believer. And Jesus Christ said, when I believe that he deposited in me his spirit. And so his spirit lives in me. Amen? So I need to not ex make excuses for what I did or what I was. I need to say who I am. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I'm a believer. I, Jesus, I mean, think about that. I, I, this is something I learned. Can, you know, can you, is it okay if I confess this? I, I learned this the other day or uh, a few weeks ago. I learned that as we recognize the Spirit's power in us, that we can kind of like, you know, speak to that a little bit. If you're not joyful, well, the Spirit of God is in me, and joy is part of the Spirit of God. So, the Spirit, would you help me be joyful right now? Amen? Right now, I don't feel like loving this person because this person is really ticking me off, right? Nobody's, I know none of you ever have that feeling. Uh, but the Spirit is in me, and the Spirit says I'm supposed to love because the Spirit is deposited in me. So I need to have, love is in me. Can I help me love this person, God? Come on. And you're, you're being real with it. This is how we do life. I mean, things are always not happy. Or sometimes maybe fear comes over you. I was thinking about uh, Ashley and Dion. We, they rushed Grace to the hospital, which her blood sugar was, what, it was 33, right? So they took her to the hospital, and then they got there and did that blood test, and so then, you know, they were all okay for a moment there, but then when the doctors rushed in and the ambulance was called and all that thing went on, uh, that brought a little fear, you know. And so I'm thinking, I pray for them, you know, Lord, let the peace be over them. Let your peace in that situation. And Gracie's home now, she's doing fine. But, you know, God is... Uh, uh, Though in every situation, the, he, his spirit has provided for us the, the opposite of what we're feeling. That's right. Amen. The good that, that God wants for us. Partner with, I want to remember anything today, partner with God. We're partnering with God's will for uh, the lost or for our lives. Amen. In, in your paper that you have right there, There's some questions. In general, what is your first response when you think about prayer? Do you 
look forward to it, dread it, or feel something in between? What do you, what's, let's go, let's start on this side, and let's go, and, and how do you feel? When you go, when it's time for prayer, how do you guys feel? You didn't know you are going to have a question and answer at church today, first day of church. But, you know, this is an uh, active church, so we want to we wanna hear your heart. What do you think? How many, how do you, how many would you say uh, look forward to prayer? Raise your hand and say you look forward to prayer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. You guys are probably people that love to pray, intercede, maybe. You pray, okay? Uh, sometimes those guys like me here, I, I dread it. How many dread going to prayer? You're like, you got to schedule it, you got to make time for it, you got to say, okay, I'm going in to be with the Father. How many is like that? Nobody, just me, huh? Okay, fine. <laughs> Nobody wants to admit it, right? How many just are somewhere in between the dreading and the, the looking forward to it? Yeah, that's probably most of us, you know, like, you know, I, the reason I fear going in prayer, can I just be honest with you? I had an experience with God uh, back in, when I was a new Christian, because I was just getting into the Word. You know how when you're new, you just read the Word, you talk to everybody? I mean, I was talking to trees, you know, Jesus loves you, you know? If your hands should clap and, and praise Him, so clap, you know? And I was just, I was, everything I read was, a, it was exciting. And I remember one day I was saying, I, I read about Moses, and Moses wanted to see God's face. Some of you that have been here regularly know the story. But, but God, uh, uh, Moses, Moses just had a desire. He, I mean, he had a relationship with God that was awesome, but he wanted to see God. I want to see you face to face. He said, well, Moses, if you see me face, you're going to die, so you can't see my face. And he said, but what we can do, because I, your heart is after me, and I want to I want to help you. He said, I'm going to put you in this, this little cave, this cleft of a rock, it says, this, this little little indentation here. And, and I'm going to pass by, I'm going to put my hand in front of you, and then you will see my back parts, right? And I said, I read that in the Word of God. I said, I want that, right? So every morning before I go to work, I, would, I, I was in the Marine Corps, so I'd work, get my uniform on, I'd get, read my body, my chair. We had a chair in our living room, just a single chair uh, with arms. I would, I would sit there and read my Bible, then I'd turn around and pray. i just put my face in the, in the cushion, and I would pray. And I'd say, God, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. And, and it's like every day, it's kind of like the presence of God would build, you know. It's like this neat thing, you know. And I didn't want to leave that, I, I, but I had to go to work, you know. So I got in the car. I was all happy, praising God on the way to work. And every, I couldn't wait till the morning time so I could do that again. And one morning... Come on, saints, just listen to me. One morning, God was in my little trailer house. Amen. Yeah. I had my face in that chair and had arms so I couldn't see to my right or left, and I didn't even want to look up to find out who was there. You know what I'm saying? It was so strong. I got sick. I was scared in the presence of God because of, of His holiness, not because of fear. It was just this, I can't even explain what it was. I tell you what, I jumped from that chair into my bed in the next room, I was so scared. Because I knew God was in there. And Tina rolls over and says, what are you doing? I had to still have my boots on, you know? <laughs> Covers over my head. I didn't want to see. Because I thought if I opened my eyes, I would see him. Amen? But the next day, guess what? I was back at that chair. I was praying. And God's presence with me. I tell you, God wants to, our will to be matched up with his will. Amen. So desire him. It says this in the word of God. Says, if you desire him, you will come on. If you seek him, I'm sorry, you'll seek him. I'm because that's the, the King James Version. If you seek him, you'll find him. Yeah. Amen. And it's not that it, and it's not like he's hiding. God's not hiding from us. It's just that we our will has to be matched up with his will. We have to want to be with him. And then he'll reveal himself to us. And I think then we leave there full of the Holy Spirit, full of his power and love, full of his grace. And you just, the joy and everything that is in us. I tell you what, those guys at the Marine Corps base, they, they ran when he saw me coming. Amen? Because I was praying for them. I was praying for their family. I was loving on them. They thought I was a nut old, nut guy. But I was. I was crazy for Jesus. I was just crazy. Led a bunch of them to Jesus. Been to some of their funerals. Did some of their weddings. Amen. Just love on those guys. I just loved it. You know, I couldn't wait to see them. You know, I said, I got this. God showed me this today. I had one with Tom Mallet. I'll tell you about my friend Tom. Pray for him every morning. Tom used to. He wanted to go skydiving. You ever jump out of a perfectly good plane? Anybody do that? Craziness. I don't know. I can't do it. I'd be throwing up all the way down, you know, something. I, I just can't do it. But uh, Tom wanted to go fly, 
get up, jump out of the time was one of those guys I, I used to keep uh, Bible tracts on my desk. And at noon I'd read my Bible. I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't have my Bible open during working hours, but during lunchtime I'd have my Bible open, I'd read my Bible, and, and the guys would come in, they would talk to me about God, right? And most of them didn't know anything about God, that's fine, I'd share. And I didn't know anything about God either, I'm just learning. But I'd share what I knew. I share about Jesus. I shared that he loved me, and forgave me of my sins, and blah blah blah. And they would just like listen, ask me questions, you know. Well, why is babies are starving in Africa? And I said, I don't know. You know, maybe because those people don't love God, and God's not blessing them, you know. But I, you know, if, if God loved people, then why does this happen? I said, I don't know. I, I just tell them when I didn't have an answer. I just didn't know. But I know this, God loves you, and he can forgive you of your sin. And boy, they would walk out of my office, and I had a big door, wooden door with glass in it, and they would slam that door. They'd be so mad. I'm like, why are they mad? I just shared about the love of Jesus. But they're mad because the Holy Spirit was dealing with their heart, you know. But guess what? Next day at lunch, guess what? Who were there? They were back in my office again. Every day they'd be in my office. I'm like, man, you are so cool. I'm just practicing how to be a witness for them. You know, I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing, you know. I'd read a little Bible track. Oh, three steps to be saved. And I would share that with them. And they would get saved. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. You know, God, but Tom Malik was so mad. So the day that he was going to the airport, on the way to the day he was going to the airport to do his, his class and jump out of a perfectly good airplane, he's a wonderful Christian today. He's lives in Pennsylvania now, retired brain, all that stuff. We talk on Facebook as well. And uh, he came to my house, and he didn't know if he would die that day if he'd go to heaven. And he wanted to know for sure. He knelt down in my living room and gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Serving God all the way to this day. Praise the Lord. It was an awesome experience. Tom Malley. Remember him praying for him. He looked well on Facebook. And uh, be friends with him. Hey, remember, be friends on our Facebook, too. They like us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all the social media, but you know, sometimes I connect with people because we've been all over the states, and so we, we, we are friends with people in California across this country now because they have moved or retired. And, Tennessee, Texas, Florida, you know, we have people, and, and sometimes when I post things, like about, I try to post, uh, I try to do it every day, but I'm not good at it, but, uh, you know, scripture or something in, in our, our church Facebook, and then they'll they'll comment on it, you know, and I tell Tina, it's like I'm pastoring a bunch of people all over the country, you know, and I know their lives, like uh, Julie Finley, who moved up to Iowa, you know, I shouldn't have said that on the tape, but, uh, you know, she struggled a little bit, but, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll say things, and then we'll get a, we'll do like, a, the, you know how you, uh, what do you call it, instant message, right? And then we talk for a few minutes. You know, encourage her to face. She helped us in California when we were doing street ministry. She had a horse. She brought this horse to this uh, Hispanic neighborhood. We put a little kid on there. I mean, he was Jesus. And we dressed him up, you know. And, he, and we brought him in and we crucified him on the cross and all that stuff. We did the whole, whole Easter play. While the gang members hung out and, and they passed all the candy out around the, the field for us and protected us so nobody would steal it. Uh, and, and so the kids, when we were done with the play and stuff, there were about 40 kids, 50 kids there, and so they could get the candy, amen? And they heard the whole person, and they had, I had them dressed up in my military cartridge belt, had the two soldiers, you know? And they're all dressed up, they had a little helmet on and stuff. It was just cute, it was just fun. And we shared Jesus with this neighborhood, amen? And all the gang members, they knew us, so they would protect us. We'd, we'd never have to, we'd never worry about our, our fear for our lives because they were there, because they, they knew we loved, we really genuinely loved them, amen? Get back to the will So desire to pray. That's a lot of stories. I got some more stories too. But um, trying to stay on track. You know how preachers are, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when God does something, a miracle in his life, he just wants to share with you. Number two, what do you struggle with most related to prayer? A feeling of complacency, unbelief, or discouragement, and why? Who would like to share that? Huh? Distractions. Distractions. Okay. So what kind of distractions do you deal with? When you want to share your missionary person, you, Anything. you share it. I sit down in my chair and all of a sudden I think, oh, I should make a cup of tea. Oh, I quick should email this before I forget. Whatever, just all different things come in my mind. And it only happens right when you get ready for prayer, right? Or That's right what I'm real aware of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I come in, when I, the first couple of years when I came here in the Capital City Church to pray, I was, I'd come in here and kneel down and pray, I'd bring a notebook because every time I got an idea like that, I have to fix a light bulb, the bathroom needs fixing, there's a sink downstairs that needs fixing. I'd write it down so I could just not be distracted. It took me a while to figure that out for me. I just had to take a notebook 
and just write those things and I'll get to them later. Amen? Because the most important thing was spending time with his word. What else? Who else to deal with it? Complacency? Anybody? No? Anybody else want to share number two? Come on. I know this is Sunday morning. I'm supposed to just preach to you all the way to 12 o'clock, but I thought this week worked better. Okay, good. Okay, number three. Um, have you ever seen God's sovereignty and his immutabilities uh, as reasons not to pray? In a sense, like, okay, well, God knows everything. This is, a, this is what I get from somebody. God knows everything. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. So, hey, I don't need to pray. Ever, anybody think like that? Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and that, and that, and that's what's, this, and, and, and again, because it's, it's true in one sense, but it, it activates our faith. It builds us up when we speak, and that's why I think it's important that uh, this year we dedicated it to speak, praying out loud for our loved ones, our, our, our church family, because we want to build our faith. And it does give us a time. I'm, you know, maybe with all this technology, I could have you check in with me, and I could log it in when you actually pray, and then we can have a report at the end of your day, how many hours we pray, right? <laughs> I won't do that. But it's, it's a good thing that we, we do pray in different time with God. Okay, number four, before this message, uh, what did the sovereign... Sovereignty of God mean to you? How has understanding of it changed? Well, I didn't really explain that all that well, so let's, let's move on to the next one, right? Read uh, Malachi 3.6. Let me turn to that real quick. And then somebody else turn to Exodus 32.14. Well, that's what, you know it says in Malachi 3.6. Did anybody get there yet? And you go and you go on to the rest of that, and it says, "Well, go ahead and read the rest of the three. That's fine. That's fine. Switch to King James, I, and I read the Lord, King James, Amplified, whatever. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. I love this verse. I love that. You know why I love that? Because people get so confused about this. They use a, a, a everybody's supposed to tithe and give a tithe to the church, right? And that says God never changes, right? And I'm, I'm thinking like, God, you're robbing God. Now think about this. God has everything. He owns everything. Like, how can we be really robbing God, right? He's talking about our faith, right? He's saying, I want you to connect with me, and I want you to be faithful in this area because you guys can't give up your money. You're just so tightwad. You just keep it. I may sit on your wallets, you know, like nobody's going to take it, right? And he says, you're robbing me because you don't, have, you don't believe I can take care of you. And I tell, try to teach people this real simple principle. When we pray and ask God to bless us and take care of us, I mean, like, He will do that. And Matthew, Matthew tells us that it, don't even worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow or what's going to happen tomorrow because there's a lot of issues over there by himself. You know, just worry about today, if you will. If you just take care of today, because I will take care of, if you will believe, I'll take care of all your needs. And the world tells us just the opposite. Get, 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 get. Listen, if you're a millionaire today sitting here, great. Praise God. Be obedient to God. Amen? If you make $20 a week, praise God. Be obedient to God. Amen? It's hard. You know, more people give, percentage-wise, that make less than people that make more. Because I remember going through this, right? I remember writing my first high check that was over $1,000. I remember writing that check. I'm thinking... <coughs> I couldn't even believe I made that much money, right? It was just a gift anyway, but I just, you know, faithful to God, right? So I write the check. How do you spell thousand again? And I remember writing it really slow, and writing the number really slow, like I was so happy and so blessed that I could do that, amen? Because God had blessed me, because everything I have is God's, right? Everything I own is God's. My children are God, my house is God, my broken down hearts are God, all of it's His. 
That's the way I try to live as much as possible, amen? Because then when somebody asks me for something, I know it's not mine I'm giving up, it's God's. Amen? And what happened to the Jewish nation there, why the, the warning was given, because they were just being, they were never helping people. They were just self-seeking, and they were leaving the principles of God. And now he was drawing them back. He said, the first thing you need to do is take care of this issue in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on. Give it up. Give that 20 cents up that you made. You made $2, it's 20 cents. It's not that much. Amen. I mean, think about it. God said you can have 90%, you get 20. I mean, he gets a 10. Or more, you know. I don't know about you, but I just, anyway. It's not a tithing message. Okay, Exodus. The thing is, uh, God doesn't change. Is that what the main point? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, and, and uh, Exodus 32, 14. Who has that one? Then the long page. I know what the third one is say. Who do you speak? And say it again. Say the last part. Lot. About Lot. Read it again. He said he was the third one. Then the Lord changed his mind about several things and said, he would do to these And the Lord changed his mind because God's will doesn't change. That every person would know him as Savior. Amen? So, yeah, guys, remember, we just a couple times, I'm going to wipe out all the human race. Big flood, right? I mean, God loves people, but he preserved them. And he could have wiped, he said, there's not one person found in all the earth to be righteous. It's like when you read that, and it's all saying, but, or yet, there's Moses, uh, um, Noah, and his family were righteous in the eyes of God. Amen? So never give up on anybody, because God doesn't give up on the human race. We can't either. Amen? Amen. If you think that person is hopeless, you can't, there's no good in them, guess what? God sees good in them. So my friend in, in uh, Nevada, right, he has this ministry called uh, Hookers for Jesus, right? What a title for a, a sermon, for a, a ministry, right? But these young ladies are being abused and, and taken advantage of, right? And they have no hope. Some of them, like Leo, they, have, they owe money, and so they have to pay off the money, and then they, they never can pay it off because the, the interest is always, you know, it's always, they always change it, right? And so these ladies are stuck in this thing, and this ministry is going out there, and they're reaching these ladies and bringing them and sharing the hope with them. Amen. Always remember that His will is that everybody is saved and comes to knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just read this last two things that live on, this, on your page. Says live. I wasn't. I wasn't going to keep that on, but I thought you could just take this home and read it. This is the Bible tells us what God's will is for every in, in many areas. For example, Second Peter three nine says that God doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to be saved. What else does the Bible say uh, for, uh, for certain about God's will for your life, marriage, finances, and children? Just, if anybody got anything to say? What does God say about your life? What does he, what does he want for your life? Love, say again? Love, joy, love, peace, peace yeah. right? And he wants you to prosper, right? Now, in America, we think we should have billions of dollars to prosper, but as your soul prosper, people forget that part. So what does that mean? As my soul prospers, as you seek and know and love and understand God, all of a sudden, man, I don't know about you, but when, the closer I get to God, the things of the world really don't matter. There's a whole song about that, you know? It really does. As you get close to God, oh, well, I want a bigger house. I want a new car. I want my kids to have this. I want that. But also, now that I'm close to God, all I want my kids to do is love God. Amen. My desire is begin to be God's desire. I just want, I don't want in myself to be successful. I just want you to know Jesus as, as your pastor. I want you to know him. I want you to love him. I want you to communicate with him. I want you to walk with him. I want you to share him with other people. Amen. So you give, 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 but then you've got to give out because that's when you grow. Right? That's when you grow, Leo, when you begin to share your faith. All of a sudden, God pours in another some more, and you get more, and you get more. Amen? It's never endless. Our faith grows if we allow Him. God doesn't want us to be the same as we are. He wants us to continue to 
grow him. Number two, it says, God looks, is, God is looking for people to partner with him, to stand in the gap like Ezekiel. In, in what area of your life does God want you to join his hand, hand with him in prayer to move his will from heaven to earth? God's will, God's will in heaven can happen on earth. Right? God's will is that no man shall perish, and he can have, it's got to ha where's it going to happen? On Mars? Jupiter? It's going to happen on Earth, because that's where his people are, right? It's going to happen here. And so God, when you pray, God, save my neighbor, I don't know my neighbor, but help me to pay, have boldness to talk to my neighbor and share the truth <laughs> with them. Maybe it takes a, a, a cupcake over, or a cake, or, you know, cookies, or whatever, to go just break open the ice and, and, and talk to them about Jesus. Amen? So uh, maybe uh, this summer, hey, uh, how about this? This is, this is a challenge to you. This is just a thought I had. You can take it or leave it. Uh, I think it's a good one. But this summer, I want you to have a barbecue at your house. And I want you to invite all your neighbors. Right at your house. Don't bring them to church. Don't bring them to... Just have a barbecue at your house. Cook up some burgers. You know, Wisconsin, you got to cook up brats. Here, you learn what brats are. Uh, it's the American tradition, you know, Wisconsin. So you learn how to eat those things and what they're about. Or, you know, if you're, if you're cooking Indian food, you can invite me too. Okay, so I just want to know you're, I'm, I'm going to be welcome there. But we just, just do it. I don't have to be there either. But just be friendly to your neighbors. Don't even tell them about Jesus the first time. And you know, they leave there, you fed them some brats, you gave them some soda, whatever, you drank. Right? And you share some stories, got to know each other, and they're going to leave there, and this is what they're going to remember. This, mark my words, this is what they're going to remember. Those are nice people. Right? That, that, was, that was fun. That was nice. And they're going to have that, and the Holy Spirit is going to use that the next time that, that you do another event, or you help them. They have a flat tire in their driveway. You helped them. They need a ride to work. You helped them. God's going to, it's amazing. My, my neighbor, uh, we talk all the time, Dwayne, and, you know, he's got uh, a bad hip. And, and I said, well, i got a bad hip too. But so he goes on one side of the sidewalk, I go on the other side of the sidewalk. But we help each other, you know. And it's just, it's just what we do. But why do, we, why do I do it? Because Dwayne has a social relation with God. And I want him to know Jesus. And I want him to come to my Bible study. I want him to know, read the Word of God. I want him to grow in his faith. Amen? Dwayne's had a rough life. And uh, I, I just want that to happen. So I'm having a barbecue in my backyard this summer. All right? And I want you to have a barbecue in your backyard. And the purpose, I know you guys live in an apartment. You can do it in an apartment complex. It's really easy. Because then you can go all the neighbors or everybody that lives in your apartment complex. You're the building that you live in. Just invite all them. You know, you yell at them because they're stomping on the floor too much or their music too loud. And also, they get an invitation to have a hamburger or some food with you. Break down some walls, amen? Break down some walls and God, God will use you in a mighty way. God loves people, amen? And if we partner with him in prayer, we'll see a miracle happen. We'll see people come to Jesus like Leo, amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many would just say, yes, Pastor Rob, I'm going to try to connect with God in prayer a little more, amen? I'm going to try to connect with God. Take a little time. Uh, for me, I had to schedule my time because it made it easier for me, amen? Schedule this time. But then when the Holy Spirit wakes me up at 3 in the morning, guess what? I'm on the floor praying then, too, because the Holy Spirit wants you to do that, right? And just just partner with me. Think about it. I never thought about it until I read this this lesson. That I'm partnering with God in prayer. Wow. I mean, how to have a prayer buddy, right? <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I've got my wife, and we pray together, too. And that's pretty powerful at times, and it's just amazing. But now, just to realize that I'm partnering with God uh, in prayer is a really great, amazing thing. Could you stand with me as we close? I'm going to have Angel come. And uh, Angel left, I guess. Oh, there you go, Mary. You got that off now.